So I have finished Star Wars Outlaws. Now, before we get into it, just a big thank you to Ubisoft for the review code. So for the past week, I have been playing Star Wars Outlaws and I've recently rolled credits on the story. And yeah, I've got a lot of thoughts about Star Wars Outlaws. In this video, I'm going to be giving you my dead honest spoiler free review of the game. Review embargoes have dropped and the game is now out for those who paid for the Ultimate Edition. So I can give you my full thoughts on the game. Is it good? Is it bad? Is it just another run-of-the-mill Ubisoft title? <laughs> we'll get into all of that in this video. Now, you'll see gameplay from all planets and some characters within the story, but nothing overly spoilery. So if you do plan on playing the game, this video is safe for you to watch. A quick disclaimer before we get into it, even though it'll probably fall on deaf ears again if my last video is any indication, I was not paid to make this video. If I want to shit on Outlaws, I can do that. If I want to glaze Outlaws, I can do that too. Ubisoft have no chokehold over my opinion in this video. Anyway, Star Wars Outlaws. Is it good? Is it bad? Let's dive into it and uh, give you my thoughts because I got a lot to say. So my first impressions of Star Wars Outlaws, I've got to say, in some areas, the game surprised me and I actually found myself enjoying it quite a bit. But there were a lot of times where it felt like an extremely safe Ubisoft open world game. Now, look, I love a good Ubisoft open world game, Far Cry 3, Black Flag, Syndicate, Origins. But in recent years, I tend to play Ubisoft titles, enjoy them for a couple hours, and then I just get bored and I move on and play something else. Outlaws was kind of the opposite when it comes to how my experience tends to go when playing Ubisoft open world games. Outlaws starts extremely slow, like it's an absolute slog. But as I put more hours into it, I started to enjoy it more and more. And by the end, I sat back and was like, you know what? This actually isn't that bad. However, I really want to talk about the story of Outlaws. Again, don't worry, this will be spoiler free, but the story of Star Wars Outlaws, in my opinion, is not good. Like, at all. I, in fact, really struggled to get invested in this story. The general gist of the story is Kay is putting together a crew to pull off a massive heist. That's all you really need to know. Think something like Solo, a Star Wars story, but a little bit different. The first half of the story, I really was not invested at all. By the second half, though, it kind of picked up a little bit and I was slowly starting to care about the characters and their mission. But overall, despite that, by the end of the story of Outlaws, I was pretty glad it was over, to be honest, so I could just forget about the shackles of the story and make the galaxy my own. I think the story of Outlaws is the weakest part of the game by far. You're kind of just doing things and then around a third of the way into the story, you start recruiting crew members for a major heist and most of the crew members are just generic characters. There's nothing inherently interesting about them. Like I recently played through Jedi Fallen Order again and I think of characters like Merrin who you pick up along the way and I'm just like, this is how you introduce crew members in a story. In Outlaws, I honestly couldn't even tell you any of their names. The only non-pre-established characters in this story that I even remember their names are K, ND5, Jalen, and Slero. That's it. There's a good half a dozen to a dozen characters in this story that, yeah, I can't even remember their name. So the story was, for me, a big letdown and the worst part of the game. I have spoken to some other creators who have also been playing the game early, and they seem to agree that the story is very slow and it doesn't really hook you. It kind of just passes by, but it does pick up a little bit in the end. It's relatively short too. The main story, I easily had it finished in about 12 to 15 hours, if that, and I didn't really rush through, but I definitely didn't take my time with the side content as I could have. I will say though, you can stretch this game out for dozens and dozens and dozens of hours, probably north of 50 hours, because there is so much to do away from the main story, which to be honest, I think that's where the meat of the game actually is. But let's talk about K Vess, the main character of the game and the protagonist that you control. I didn't really like K, to be honest. Like, she's fine. She's not offensive or anything. They do at least try to flesh the character out with some backstory and some flashbacks, but she was never really overly likable. I know it's a harsh comparison, but Fallen Order and Survivor, Cal Kestis, that is a Star Wars video game protagonist. Comparing K to Cal, not even in the same ballpark. Don't get me wrong, she's not an awful character or anything, she is fine, but when you're playing a game where it's possible to sink north of 50 hours into, you want to love that character. Personally, I just didn't. As for ND5, your droid companion, they tried to do some interesting things with, and I think if the story was a little tighter and the writing just a little more intriguing, then the emotional payoff moments they went for might have hit the way that they were hoping. 
It was interesting what they did with him, but because I just couldn't get overly invested in the story and K, I found the big moments with ND5 less punchy than the game intended. There was actually some interesting stuff going on with Jalen and Slero, the main villain of the game, that I actually did like, but it felt like it was just a little bit too late by that point. Slero is the main villain of the game, and I think the idea of his character is actually really cool, and I think they had a really, really interesting idea with this character that had a shitload of potential, but by the end, it kind of just fizzles out, and I was left pretty disappointed. I just want to say I'm really sorry. This is really hard to do without getting into spoilers, so bear with me if my explanation of the story and the character seems a little bit vague. But yeah, the story and characters of Outlaws, in my opinion, are the worst thing about the game. By no means awful, I get, don't get it twisted, it's not terrible, but definitely underwhelming and skippable. But let's lighten it up a little bit here. The gameplay is one of the more positive elements of the game. It's by no means groundbreaking or amazing, but it's very serviceable and at times could actually be quite enjoyable. I found elements of the stealth to be fun, performing specific takedowns where you actually have to think and time your actions was honestly pretty fun. Stealth in games can annoy me when it's too much, but I kind of just enjoyed the stealth here, largely because of Nyx. You can get pretty creative with how you approach stealth because of him. He can go through vents, attack, pick up items, sabotage control panels, like you can really get creative with it. Unfortunately, the AI in this game is, at times, absolutely awful. They will see things that they shouldn't see and are oblivious to things that should be alerting them instantly. But if you luck out and the enemy AI actually works as intended, the stealth can be a lot of fun. Gunplay is also serviceable, but there is a mechanic in the game where if you basically do anything in game, then any blaster you pick up, K will just drop it. Like they really try and force you to use K's blaster, which you can upgrade. But if you pick up one of the many blasters in combat, the second you do anything but shoot it, G basically just drops it on the ground. And this absolutely did my head in. It drove me batshit insane. Because these blasters were really fun to use, they felt powerful and some of them are iconic and I want to use them. But every time I did something, he would just drop it and it's like, just dude. So I think the gameplay side of Outlaws is about on par with what I expected overall. Fun on the surface level, but when you get into the finer details, there are problems. Now, it's also worth noting the facial animations in the cutscenes at times could look pretty good, but sometimes they could look absolutely awful. I did have a lot of issues with dialogue not syncing with the character's mouth, which did irritate me quite a bit. And there were a few bugs here and there that were kind of annoying, but didn't really ruin the game for me. But there was one instance where I went into a syndicate meeting with two rival syndicates. I was aligned with one of them and the other was hostile. And when shit hit the fan, all of them started shooting me despite the fact I didn't do anything. And because I was aligned with one of these factions, when they all started shooting at me, I couldn't shoot them back. So I had to sit behind a rock and wait for ND5 to kill them for me because the game just didn't realize that they turned on me and I couldn't kill them. It was really, really weird. I don't know if this was a bug, an intended feature, but it made absolutely no sense and really confused the hell out of me. Now, the game could also get a little overwhelming at times. Outlaws throws a lot at you to the point where you kind of just lose your mind and do none of it, or you're literally just going to spend endless hours doing the same thing over and over again. You have your main quests, but around it, you have side quests around the world, across all planets, and syndicate-specific quests with the four syndicates. You can choose to do these or completely ignore them. The main story gives you choices as to what syndicates you want to favor, but certain missions will put you in positions where you're going to piss off your favorite syndicate. Now, I tended to align with Crimson Dawn and the Huts, but often it would clash and I'd be on the wrong side of one of them at some point, which was pretty annoying. But I think the game actually has a lot of replay potential because of the syndicate system. But when you go into the quest menu in a general first playthrough, you're kind of just smacked in the face with everything there is for you to do. Like it's almost too much. So that about does it for my surface level impressions of Star Wars Outlaws. The story was extremely disappointing, easily the worst part of the game for me. And the gameplay is about what I expected from Star Wars Outlaws. And the bugs were present, but they weren't really overbearing to the point where it ruined my experience. But let's talk about the open world of Star Wars Outlaws. This is where my tune changes when it comes to Star Wars Outlaws. Up until now, it's been relatively negative, but here it changes. The open world, I actually really liked. 
The idea of an open world Star Wars game has been something people have been excited about for years and we finally start to see what that can look like and ultimately I think that is the reason to play this game. Getting into it for the story and characters will probably end up in disappointment but getting this game to explore the open world is where the value in this game lies. Now the main four planets are Tashara, Akiva, Tatooine and Kijimi. I think Tatooine and Kijimi are the two best planets to explore, especially Tatooine. Now as I said earlier, the game started slow for me, but when I got to Tatooine, I started to see why this game is worth your attention as a Star Wars fan. Jumping on your speeder and exploring Tatooine was amazing. Walking through Mos Eisley, I was just like, yeah, th like this is the reason that this game exists. This right here is why. Exploring Tatooine in its entirety was just so much fun. There's a bunch of cool little easter eggs all over the place and this is where the magic of this game is. Now, although the other planets aren't as cool as Tatooine, the open world aspect of these worlds is definitely the fun part of this game. Littered across the open world are various side missions and things to do, whether that be random NPC interactions, races, side missions, helping people out, rival syndicate ambushes, there's always something going on. Yet the game still lets you take in its beauty and allows for quiet moments to get yourself immersed in the world. Now you mainly spend your time traversing this open world on your speeder, which you can upgrade so it's faster and stronger, and you will spend a lot of time on this thing. And to be honest, it actually controls pretty well, but when you're under attack, you rely on a dead eye feature to fend off attackers. There is no other way to get rid of them, which is really weird, really stupid, didn't like that. Now, although the speeder does control well and is fun to use, you will get the Red Dead 2 riding your horse into a tree thing here. You clip a rock sometimes and you just crash. It's actually pretty funny, to be honest. But the way these open worlds are put together means you'll basically have one or two major cities on a specific planet and in between are wide open landscapes where you can ride around and do whatever you want, really. At times, you really do feel like you're immersed into the Star Wars universe as a scoundrel, which ultimately is what this game was going for, and I think at times, they definitely pull it off. If you want to go into a random cantina and gamble and cheat in a game of Sabacc, you can do that. If you want to do some shady dealings, you can do that. If you want to backstab others in the underworld, again, you can do it. But I think there is a bit of a conflicting tone with this game, however. It wants to highlight the shady underbelly of the Star Wars universe, but it still goes a little goofy and childish at times with its tone. So there's a bit of conflict here. But I think the game would have benefited way more with its desire to show you the shady underworld of Star Wars if they just swung for the fences making this game more mature. But Disney probably wouldn't let that go, unfortunately. Star Wars Outlaws feels like a very Disney-fied Star Wars underworld if that makes sense. But regardless of that, the open world of Star Wars Outlaws is the star of the show. The story and the characters are lacking and the gameplay at times is fun, but the novelty of an open world Star Wars game is definitely what carries Outlaws into being a game that is probably worth checking out. I will say I don't think this is a game that's going to capture the interest of players who are not Star Wars fans. If you don't like Star Wars, Outlaws is not going to win you over. This game is basically a middle of the road Ubisoft open world game with a Star Wars coat of paint that takes it up a level. Now if I was to give this game an overall rating out of 10, I'd probably settle on a 6 out of 10. Which probably makes me a shill with the current state of the internet because people are insane. Star Wars Outlaws is about on par with what I expected and I think there is a lot of fun to be had here. There's a place in gaming for games like this, that's for sure. It's not thought-provoking art like Red Dead 2, but it's not a dumpster fire like the internet continues to insist. But let me know your thoughts about Star Wars Outlaws in the comments below. Are you going to pick it up? Are you playing it right now? Let me know. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Drop a like on the video, of course, and uh, take care. I'll see you guys next time.